So I'll, I'll start. Um, my name is Eyal, and um, I know I'm the last lecture before the happy hour. So I got this uh, good slot to have. So thanks for everyone who's attending and staying. Um, I ran product marketing for Western Digital, uh, for data center and compute. And I came from the science acquisition that Western Digital had made. So I spent most of my career on Flash. But I definitely learned in the last nine months how complex hard drives are and how critical component is it for the data center and how much more innovation is going on in that space. Because I'm going to mention some of it as it pertains to how data center evolved to enable more um, capabilities, more performance, more capacity from those hard drives. So I'm going to talk about that. And we call this uh, presentation Survival of the Fittest uh, because all of us has to evolve to basically um, embrace and support the data growth that is going on, the requirement of application, and the ones who won't evolve will not survive. And evolve means uh, embrace the trend, uh, accept and invest in community ahead of uh, when we're going to see revenue out of that. And we kept seeing, we kept doing that in a few areas, and we're inviting everyone to join us. And that's the only way to survive and, and continue to bring value to our customers. So um, <clears throat> this is a forward-looking statement. In my presentation, I'm going to make some predictions. Not all of them are going to materialize. And I have to put this slide on. Um, data transforming the world. Um, a lot has been said about that. Uh, we used to track the three V, volume, velocity, and value. Um, on the volume side, I mean, you know, pick, pick, a, pick an analyst. Um, the last I've heard was 80, 50 zettabytes would be created by 2021. Very large number are being created. Not all of them are stored, but all of us has to manage, has to transfer those data. And velocity, um, if you just look three decades ago, uh, some work that could take us 250,000 years to compute takes us one day to compute today. So a lot of advancement in compute, a lot of advancement in storage, impacting all those verticals that we can see on the screen, a lot of conversation about what's happening with autonomous car and smart cities, and all of us has to process these data points. Um, where people store the data is also changing. So at the beginning of the decade, and this is coming actually from IDC last week in IDC direction, um, just in the beginning of these decades, two-thirds of the data was stored on consumer and edge devices. Next year, half of it will be stored on public cloud. And if you roll to 2023, 80% would be in public and private cloud. And it's not anymore public and private cloud only. Um, obviously, there is uh, people in the cloud will take your workload almost for free into their cloud. But we know the other one around is not free. And we see attempts that take the workload or take the cloud or bring it close to the workload. And we see that um, trend as well happening. Um, and in order to support that, we're going to talk about three main uh, problems we're trying to solve and address, both on the scale, flexibility, and performance. Um, some of the uh, media. Um, and, and a lot of people are talking about cannibalization of one media versus the other. Um, we share this chart in our Vesto Day in uh, late 2018. A lot of growth happening both on the SSD and on the NAND side, uh, and the hard drive side. Uh, you can see the amount of scale. We're talking still more than 6x petabyte on the hard drive versus the flash. A lot of this data has to be stored somewhere. We cannot produce enough fab to store it on flash, even though People like the performance on Flash, we cannot. And, and honestly, a lot of the applications don't need that type of uh, performance, don't need that type of latency. The other aspect is obviously the cost, which is, again, has to do with, with the supply side, of course. Uh, We're talking about this magic 10x number between SSDs and hard drive. And, and that's not a magic number. Uh, we are driving our engineering team on both sides to continue to drive cost because cost reduction enable more application, uh, enable new use cases to evolve. Um, so we see that both on the NAND side and on the hardware side. In some hardware categories, uh, what people call the 10K, 15K, uh, we call them performance enterprise, 
we're already seeing faster erosion, faster cannibalization, given those price point dif difference becomes smaller. And you see we focus in the outlook about two times uh, 10K harder versus fresh, and that's where we see a massive cannibalization of that media versus the other. But on capacity enterprise, uh, very material to the data center uh, in conjunction with flash. And, and we think that company that has access to both those media technology can have, could help the customer uh, develop the next infrastructure uh, better. So I said, we want, I want to talk today on those three uh, challenges and uh, we'd call them opportunities. And what are we doing both on the NAND side and what are we doing on hard drive to address those? So let's start with scale, the most obvious one. So um, hard drive at the end are complex devices. But if you want to grow density, there are few, few ways you can do it. Right? So you need to have either the aerial density of the platter to be larger. And we did that on our 15 terabyte drive that we uh, released last year. We can have more platters. Uh, so we, we used to have five disks, six disks, seven disks. We are now shipping drive with eight disks. But that costs money. So we don't, want the, we don't want to add that extra disk if we don't have to, because we have to continue to drive the cost down. So as we look in the future of how, to, and how can we support more density for the customers, we start to introduce these energy assist technologies. So basically, how can we store more bits on the same track? And this is what we call the energy assist PMR that allows us to store more bits with the same mechanical dimension. Um, so we sampled customer with a 16 terabyte EPMR already in, in 2018. Our software feedback is very positive, and it's basically a drop in replacement to the customer, and that's what we're looking for. Same reliability, support the cost reduction trend customer expecting for um, at, at the lowest risk possible. So that's on the hard drive side, and we're going to continue to evolve that roadmap, continue to evolve those energy assist technology to allow us to provide that for the customers. On the flash side, um, you can see on the left the petabyte on flash, uh, you know, and 50, 40, 50, 60 exabyte in 2018. And that number is growing. And when we started the journey on SSD in the data center, yeah, there are a few interfaces, but the end SSD look roughly the same for what it provides for the end application. Um, we're starting to see more purpose-built SSD as we look into the future. So as this exabyte for flash grows so much, customer now wants to have more purpose-based SSD for the compute node or for the storage node. And this, was, this is where we see those form factor, those new form factor aren't EDSFF, which we are largely, largely a support of that, getting adopted by the uh, hyperscale and by the OCP community. Obviously, EDSFF long is the first. We see that fits very well with the storage node, and we're investing in that technology, which we're going to bring on our future devices. And then later for compute node, you could probably have a smaller version. In this case, we're showing an EDSFF short, but there could be different flavors that would support the customer requirement, the customer application. And obviously, it goes beyond form factor. Um, we, we, we talk about form factor, but it goes around different endurance point, different performance point, and different capacity at this market bifurcates to more purpose-built drives. So that's uh, the two point on scale on the hard drive on the flash. Let me talk about flexibility. And flexibility is what we are doing together with the customer, together with the ecosystem to provide more value. On the hard drive side, <clears throat> so SMR, uh, shingle magnetic recording, basically allowed us to get more bits, more density out of the same guts of a drive. And we started that journey Four years ago, we actually introduced first helium drive in 2015, 10 terabyte SMR. Um, that didn't get adopted broadly. And we believe that we need that host weight SMR to uh, be supported by all the community, all the ecosystem. And I'm very happy to share that together we are partners that you can see on the screen, Broadco, Microchip, ATTO, SUSE, and others. And with a lot of work by our customers, Finally, we're seeing a large adoption of SMR. And that's really going very, very fast now. And you can see the focus and the outlook that we have together with the customers. 
to the degree that we believe half of the bits going to be stored in SMI by 2023, half of the bits. Um, and it's just because of the TCO is better, and once you get the firmware, the infrastructure to support that, you know how to tell your application to walk beyond those kind of drives, it's basically make you not competitive if you're not, you're not moving to that SMR drive. You can, you can also get a higher density, better dollar per gigabyte if you're using that technology. Before I move to the next slide, there is a prize that I'm going to give in the end, which is that Western Digital WD Black SSD, one terabyte. So you better listen. I'm going to ask a question at the end, and whoever has the answer is going to get the drive. Forgot to mention at the beginning. So flexibility doesn't add with the hard drive. On the flash side, um, we talk about this black box SSD. And we did have SATA and SAS. Those interfaces, as we know, came from the hard drive. Uh, we moved to NVMe, which is a standard we like very much, that allows all of us vendors to innovate on that standard, but still provide a common way for the customers and for the, ven the vendor to provide a solution. So there, was a lot of, there is a lot of adoption in NVMe, as, as we all know, in this space. Uh, but some customers are looking for more. Some customers are looking for more influence to know, OK, I have this black box SSD. Because I, I have the host, if only I had more hints, I could actually get better value for my drive. And this is where the open channel community has started. And apparently, it got bifurcated pretty rapidly because there were many implementation and different solutions on open channel, which slowed down some of the adoption. So we uh, listened, and together with some key customer and key ecosystem player, in NVMe, we were bringing the ZNS concept, which doesn't get you all the way to open channel, but it starts to provide some principles which will allow the customer to have more efficient system if only we optimize the drive in that way. ZNS allows you to write sequentially in a different zones, uh, we're going to talk about that tomorrow. Matthias is going to talk about that. I think Matthias is here uh, in one of the technical track. And it, it just in the beginning uh, of uh, defining that protocol, but we see a lot of momentum. We see a lot of uh, pull from customers to go innovate around that and expand the NVMe to provide some of the open channel uh, features that customers were looking for. The nice thing about ZNS that it's not totally new. A lot of those concepts are similar to what we have on SMI from the hardware world. So basically, we're going to allow the customer and, again, those same ecosystem partners to innovate around the same principle and hopefully minimize the stack changes and provide that harmonization of protocols for both SSD and hard drive. And I think that's the other angle of adoption. How, again, how do we make those new things adopted faster? We're trying to find those common ground, and SMI fits very well into that model. So I talk about scale. I talk about flexibility and what we do on, on the both media. And let me show you what's going on on the performance side. So performance, hard drive. Um, I'm very glad to share our progress on dual actuator on hard drive. So uh, some customers in some application, we see this problem of access density. So as we provide bigger and bigger hard drive, the IOPS you can get for every terabyte gets lower. And some applications, some workload cannot deal with that. So we're going to have a hard drive that basically provide IOPS of almost two drives in one hard drive. So think about how much saving it provides for the customer. You can, as an example, up two 10 terabyte drive and just use one 20 terabyte drive. So it allows us now to continue grow and provide that extra density without compromising our performance. And you obviously get better power, better TCO, and even bit better TCA when you compare those, those two solutions. We are demoing that in the booth. That technology is real. Uh, mechanical design is very competitive. We're getting very good feedback from the uh, very few customers that we are talking with and showing that technology with. And uh, we expect to introduce it in the coming future. That technology is providing more performance, and it is for those application workloads where we need that. So we don't necessarily think it's going to be one solution for all, 
but it's definitely going to be where you have these uh, access density challenge. On flash and performance, I decided to, instead of talking about, you know, we can go Gen 4, Gen 5, and different things, I think what's, what is amazing, what's going on in this memory space. So in 2018, we released a product, memory extension 200, part of our Ultrastar family, that allowed the customer to scale DRAM in the most effective way. They were talking about, with a single device, you can now have extra four terabytes of memory on one slot, and we do it much cost effective than any other RAM solution available out there. It's very well optimized for in-memory database and virtualization environment. And uh, the feedback from the customer is very positive. What can provide them as they're trying to upgrade existing system just to much larger memory. Don't ha they don't have to buy extra socket to s extend their memory in their infrastructure. So near DRAM performance for large in-memory workload, that's what can you do with that type of solution. Um, and again, as, as I was saying earlier on, on the uh, dual actuator, that solution is working very well for those in-memory database application. We're going to be also in, in Reddit conference next, next month and, and present that solution. So to recap, um, scale, flexibility, and performance. Um, and that's what we do. That's all the innovations, technology. As you can see, all of them require standardization. All of them require work with the ecosystem. So it's not, you know, when we, and we see our role in Western Digital um, to drive the ecosystem, to work with the customer on a standard that would allow adoption. That's why we are very bullish on collaboration. We, can do any, we cannot do anything on our own other than innovating really within the drive. And that means we have to work with everyone. And everyone on the screen is communities we are working with to enable adoption of those technologies. Um, and that's why, you know, it took us time to get SMR done, and, and there's a lot of work on the Linux community, open source by our, our developer. That four years we invested that to with the customers, and now we see this. Uh, we expect to see this massive adoption, and we're going to continue that. Continue to do that in technologies that we believe going to matter for our customers. So one example um, on collaboration with a customer. And this is a specific example on uh, a ride-sharing type of application where you have to manage millions of users, run billions of trips, and how basically on the bottom you can see what type of application you have to run. Either it is location services or you have to do analytics. On the top is how we can help the customer solve that problem with each of those different media solutions that we have in the portfolio. So you can basically have a discussion at the top to bottom across the entire journey his customer had. To close, um, scale, uh, energy assist technology going to be uh, very relevant in the harder to allow us to scale to the next densities. In Flash, we're going to introduce this new form factor that allows us to start tailoring those SSDs for those different workloads the customer has. I talk about flexibility between SMR, ZNS, and how much synergy there are between the two to allow, again, better TCO for the customers. And the performance, um, we're going to start uh, test or dual actuator or hard drive to enable the customer to continue scale density, but not compromise on performance. And as I mentioned, we're not going to do it on our own. We're going to collaborate and continue to, to do that in the community. Thank you very much. Three, how many? S what would be the share SMR drive will ship? How many SMR drive will be out there? Who said fifty percent? Okay, Tom. Tom got it. Tom got it. <laughs>